Hey guys, it's Gina and I am here today to talk with you about Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. So the first half of this will be spoiler free, so do not fear. I will give warning when I am going to go into the spoilers of this book. There's not many spoilers, but I do want to talk about the twist. So that is definitely a spoiler and I will give warning before I get there. Girl on the Train follows three women and it's told in three POVs. You have Rachel, Megan, and Anna. Rachel travels on the train every single day and I really believe that she is the main character of this story even though we do have the POVs of the other two girls. It just felt like it was her story. Like you mainly get her voice, you pretty much mainly get her head, and it most of the time is told from her POV. Basically she travels the train to and from work every single day, although she actually isn't traveling to work you find out that she's just traveling to London on the train and she sees things. She just kind of observes. She just kind of observes things and sees out the window because there's this stop where she can see clearly into people's backyards and their gardens and she just starts watching people and starts giving them stories. So she starts giving stories to this couple that she sees because she thinks that they're so perfect. Well come to find out this girl's name is Megan and she is the one that she is that Rachel has been watching and she actually lives three houses down from Rachel's ex and his new bride Anna and their kid. So the first half of the story is just her traveling back and forth on this train which is where we get Girl on the Train, which also makes you think that it's mainly her story. But throughout the book you start seeing more things happen and more stuff with the other two characters and things kind of start to unravel. Eventually Megan goes missing and you kind of see up to her disappearance through her POV and you also see what's going on with Anna and Rachel as well and kind of their involvement and how they know her and how basically the rest of the book is just figuring out what happened to Megan and how she disappeared and where she's at and just everything that happens. Everything ends up tying together at the end and you have the end of the book. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I enjoyed it. It was a fun entertaining read but I wouldn't necessarily say it was one of my favorites. It has been compared to Gone Girl and we all know that I have a love-hate relationship with Gone Girl. I've talked about it multiple times in a few different videos. I have a love-hate relationship with Gone Girl. I don't like Gillian Flynn's writing. I just don't. However, with Paula Hawkins, I actually enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the writing. I enjoyed the different aspects of it. So the writing isn't what bothered me. What bothered me was just some of the missing plot and the different POVs. I don't think that it necessarily needed to be in three POVs. I think it would have been just fine had it just been in Rachel's POV. I honestly don't think that we needed Anna nor Rachel's POVs because it just didn't really give to the story at all in my opinion. I also didn't like how the different POVs time jumped a lot especially in the beginning because in the beginning you have you know months ahead of time in Megan's POV with what happened leading up to her disappearance. At the same time you're having Rachel and Anna's after she had disappeared and it just it was really confusing at first and it took a while to get used to. In fact at one point in time I actually had a notepad where I wrote down where each girl was at when I got to a new POV and that helped. It helped a lot. But then I started listening to it on audiobook. I originally was reading this on ebook and I changed to audiobook just to kind of finish it because it was available. Uh, I did not like the audiobook. This is definitely a book that I would recommend physically reading so that way you can see the cues and see the date and the time from each of these POVs because it was really hard to keep track of where I was at in the story because you have to kind of backtrack and go through the same day with all these different POVs. That I did not like. That I think it would have just been better had we just stayed in Rachel's head. As far as the characters go, I wasn't overly in love with any of them. Anna really got on my nerves. Like, mm hmm I did not like Anna's character at all. Until the end. The end she kind of redeemed herself a little bit but not really. She has it out for Rachel from the very beginning of the book because she was Rachel's husband's mistress and she's the new wife yet Rachel is still around all the time and is just really bitter about things and so she thinks that Rachel's out to get them and she's just kind of a brat and I did not like her. Rachel, 
I, I, I don't know. I liked Rachel enough. Once she got her drinking under control, she was somewhat enjoyable. And you did start feeling bad for her a little bit. Megan, I enjoyed at the beginning. And then towards the end, I was just kind of indifferent about her. I didn't really like her nor dislike her. I, she was just kind of there. As for all of the supporting characters in each of these POVs, such as the various husbands, the therapist, the detectives that you don't see a lot of, you don't really see a lot of any of them. You just kind of get tastes of them occasionally. So you don't really get enough of them to get attached to any of them. And I felt like the character development was lacking. And I think that goes back to the having multiple POVs. Had we just been stuck on one POV, I think it could have built character development a little more and could have gotten you attached to some of these characters. It just, I don't, I did not like the POVs in this book. As for the twist, it wasn't as shocking as I was hoping it would be. That being said, I didn't have it figured out from the very beginning. I kind of started figuring it out and I had my own theories, but I also went into it knowing that there was going to be a huge twist. I was expecting it to be bigger than it was. That being said, I know a lot of people that didn't see it coming and was completely surprised by it, and that's fantastic. I'm glad that you were surprised by it. For me, it was just kind of there. Overall, I have a really meh feeling about this book, which is why I gave it a 3.5. It's kind of... It's actually a very true 3, 3.5 for me. Usually my 3, 3.5s either lean more towards I didn't like it or lean more towards I did like it. And it's very kind of wishy-washy with whether or not on how I rate my 3, 3.5s. But this one is actually a very standard meh book. Like, I was kind of indifferent for it. I didn't overly love it. I definitely didn't hate it. It was enjoyable. It was an enjoyable, mindless read that I just read for enjoyment. And that's really all I have to say that doesn't give anything away. So if you have not read this book, please stop watching this video if you don't want to be spoiled about the ending. So if you have not read this book and you are leaving this video, thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. If you are staying around because you have read this book, Thank you for continuing to watch. So by the end of the book, you find out that Megan is dead and that she has been murdered and that she was sleeping around with two other men and was pregnant with one of those two other men's child. She was sleeping around with her therapist and she was also sleeping around with Anna's husband, who is also Rachel's ex-husband. Throughout the entire book, it's setting it up to make you think that Rachel is the one that killed her because Rachel was drinking really heavy the night she disappeared and she doesn't remember what she was doing, but she kind of remembers, but she had a cut on her head, so she knows that she got into some kind of altercation and she has evidence that she was on their street that night and everything's just kind of a blur. So it builds it up to make you think that Rachel was the killer. I knew from the very beginning that Rachel couldn't have been the killer because it would have been way too easy and very, very predictable. The killer, like I said, was actually Rachel's ex-husband because he was the other one that she was sleeping around with. And you end up finding out at the very end of the book that when she told him that she was pregnant, he basically told her he didn't want anything to do with it and to have an abortion. And he was already on edge because of Rachel being on the street and being completely drunk. And he ended up getting carried away and murdered her. Okay, it's plausible. It is definitely plausible and it didn't surprise me as much as I was hoping it would. Again, I think had there been more character development, I would have gotten attached to the characters a little bit more and then it might have been a little bit more surprising. It just wasn't. It was lackluster. It was just very plain and like I've seen it before. The one kind of character flaw that I had with all of this and with the twist is that they start mentioning this red-haired guy and how Rachel saw him coming off of the train that night and she ran into him and he helped her and then she ends up going and waiting for him again to see if he knows anything about that night and they kept building up around this red-haired guy. So I was really hoping that he had something to do with it, that he was more connected than it made you think. I was hoping that he was actually Anna's ex, the one from like 10 years ago with whom she did have a baby with and ended up killing on accident. So I was hoping it was going to be him because 
that would have been a twist like this random dude comes in that like you didn't see even coming and it just it would have I would have enjoyed that better than it being Rachel's ex-husband but that wasn't the case he just kind of came in talked to her was like oh yeah I was drunk too I didn't remember anything from that night and then he was gone again he was completely irrelevant completely pointless didn't need to be in there they just threw him in and then took him out I mean I guess I get it throw him in for like another suspect to start making you think that it was him that killed her so I guess in that point it was good but there just was no development with him he just kind of came in and then you talked about him a little bit and then he left that was it so that's really all I have to say about this book it was just kind of meh I enjoyed it, but I will probably never read it again. If it does become a movie, I will go see the movie because I think it would make a really good movie. And I am glad that I read it because, like I said, it was enjoyable. It was just enjoyable. So that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have read this and if you're at the end of this video. I would hope that you have read this. Otherwise, I just spoiled the complete ending and the twist and everything. But I did warn you to leave this video. So if you have read this book, let me know in the comments what you thought of it. Were you kind of meh like me? I see a lot of mixed reviews of this. Like you, most people either really love it, some people kind of hate it. And I have seen a few kind of meh feelings toward it as well. So definitely let me know what you thought about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Because there's this train for chat. I think it would have been just fine had it just been in Megan's pe not Megan. So, computer. Because he was the other one that he was the...